Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. And I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we have an interesting show today, and it's about the loss of a grandparent to COVID-19. Um, there's a lot going on right now with people in nursing homes and uh, just people in general that are high-risk uh, people, and it's a very fear fearful time for people that they might lose a family member, particularly a grandparent. Isn't that a problem, Heidi, now? Well, yes. Um, I mean, especially because we are in a pandemic right now, and the people, many of the people that are dying are grandparents mm -hmm. and, and many of them are in nursing homes. So, and have pre-existing conditions. So this is a very real problem. And I love it. We're going to talk about how do we talk to kids and how do we help kids who have lost a grandparent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Heidi, uh, we've got uh, a wonderful guest today talking about this topic. Would you like to introduce her? Sure. So our guest today is Marianne Donnan. She has a clinical psychology master's degree. She is a playwright and a film director, and she splits her time between France and the U.S. And the name of her book is, Mom? The Loss of a Grandparent to COVID-19. Yes. So, so welcome to the show, Marian. Hi, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. So uh, you're a playwright and uh, you're a person who likes to write about things and conversations. And so you've written this great book to a conversational book for children, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Converse for the family, in fact, for the children, but for the parents too. Well, you have lost your parent, your dad, a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. And for the cancer. And uh, so the grief uh, and, and terrorist me, I think, is very, very important subject to speak in family and speak with children uh, a lot of time children didn't speak a lot about that and keep the silence so for me it was very important to give one support and in fact i wrote these these first versions of this text uh, a long time ago i never published it you uh, started on the text a long time ago after your yes. father died yeah, yeah. So you could talk to your kids about having a grandparent die? Yeah, not just for my children, but for for all children. Yes, it's true. My own experience um, gave me motivation to, to write, of course. Mm -hmm. But with the coronavirus, when it arrived, um, at the beginning, I was just in the fear because, you know, it starts yeah. first in France and my mom uh, lives in the first cluster in France. Mm. Uh, so at the beginning, all the media uh, in France just speak about the virus, the illness, the number of deaths, but not about the grief, not about the impact in the real life of people who lost one loved one. Well, it has been very disturbing thinking about people dying alone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, while it's heartening, I mean, I saw on the news the other day, they had a window washer at one of the n nursing homes and they took people up on the window washer to look in the window at their family members. You know, oh, wow. Wave to them. And it, it's very disturbing. That's bad. To think of, yeah, and to think about people dying alone and, and very disturbing for children i actually my sister-in-law is actually on hospice right now in a nursing home and cannot see her family heidi's aunt so very disturbing right heidi absolutely she's very she's all alone mm -hmm. and you mean she they've even taken her dog so she's by herself and her family can't see her they're not allowed in so it's it's difficult to be all alone you know this really brought something up for me uh, i was looking at some of the things in your book, some of the uh, questions. And when I was uh, uh, 14, my, my mother, my grandmother was in the hospital and she was having surgery for cancer and I begged my mother to let me go see her mm. when I was 14. My mother didn't. Wow. I, 
honestly never forgave her because, and one of the things you say is, what do you say to a child when they say to you, uh, I wasn't able to tell him I loved him? You mm -hmm. know, that is really difficult. What would you say to a child uh, who has somebody in there? Yeah, in the book, I speak about that because uh, with the coronavirus, even if the parents want to create a, a visit between children and grandparents at the end of the life, they cannot because it's not possible. Now they have more adaptive now they try in, in not all the hospital, but in few hospitals, they try to create just one visit with a mask and all protection, but very is a big distance. But anyway, with, with all this adaptation, it's not like we can t touch, take, right. make, say, I love you directly uh, with the hug. So in my book, it was very important to... Uh, to to speak about all these question, frustration, interrogation of children uh, mm -hmm. about that. Why I cannot do that if I wanted to? And right. uh, in in the book, uh, because it's a dialogue between the mother and the child, so the mother tried to respond to that. And, and what does the mother say? The, uh, the mother, the mother say it was not possible. But um, in fact, in the book is I think the book can help more because they have a lot of love uh, during the discussion. Um, uh, the, the mother, for example, show his own emotion. She she showed to her child she cried too, and it's it's. Uh, okay with that, but we can do it together, be mm -hmm. a share together. And all the questions have a response, uh, but always with tenderness, tenderness, with kind, with kind, with sweet and, and love manner to respond. So lots of love. I, yeah, you know, some of the things that was happened with my sister-in-law's the family's all writing letters to her. I think having little kids draw pictures, write letters, that kind of thing to get to the hospital are probably good, good things to do. So what would you say to your kids uh, when they ask the question with the fear, uh, am I going to die too? In the book, I, we respond to this question very directly. Uh, I chose, uh, like author, to give a response about the, in the book, with respond, you will, you will uh, born, you will grow up, you will get old, and you, and you will die. Um, I, because you, with all the coronavirus, uh, they have um, a, a trouble with uh, belonging uh, so for me, it was very important, and for young children, again more, to to uh, give a very strong belonging in the human race and in the family. That's why it's a it's a part um, with a little humor at a moment because mm -hmm. the the mom said, "Yeah, you will uh, dad uh, like your dad, and you will have." Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a little humor, but it was for me very important uh, to give one a future in the vision of, of a future for, for the children. And yes, normally uh, he, 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 can, he can grow up and, and die very Right, well. so help, having them project into the future of yes. what they will be doing, having them kind of visualize how they will grow up. That's a good idea, isn't it, Heidi? I like that. And I also like that this book is about grieving with your children and, uh, you know, that, that we're all in this together. We're going to get through this together. Mom and dad are here for you as you're grieving the death of your grandparents. And um, I think that is, that is really important too. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing you have in there is how do you respond? Um, uh, where do you think he is now? What do you say to your child where, when they say, where do you think he is now? Yeah, yeah, it's a very important question. And the mother responds with a lot of sincerity. sincerity. Mm -hmm. uh, she said um, all the possibility, all the different culture propose. It can be the 
uh, like uh, uh, we can believe in uh, Eden, no, come on, heaven, we can believe in re reincarnation or all different propositions, but the mother said to the children, to, to the child, the more important is what do you want to believe? What, what you, children, do you want to believe? I like that idea and whatever brings them comfort. And I know I worked with, with kids that had lost a firefighter father in 9-11. And it, it was really important to explore where they believed their father was. And if they believed in heaven, then we use that in the therapy. They, that Whatever brings people comfort, I think, is important after a loss. Thank you for writing this book. And I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people. And it's called Loss of a Grandparent to COVID-19 grants. So thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. And thank you for all the hope you're giving people that have had a grandparent die of COVID-19. And thanks everybody for joining us today. And Heidi and I want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.